an introduction to amateur radio in India. What is amateur radio? Who uses amateur radio and why do they call it amateur radio or ham radio? To start off, amateur radio is what professionals call it as a hobby. You can get on different frequencies that are allocated specifically for amateurs and you can talk to people with the same interests and hobbies either locally, regionally, nationally or even across the world and also into space. Some say that amateur radio is probably the first social network before Facebook or any other social network that has ever existed. Now why use amateur radio? Amateur radio uses radio frequency to communicate across the country and across the world but it also contributes to science and technology. There are a lot of discoveries that the amateur radio folks were responsible for. Amateur radio is also required, for example, in emergencies like tornadoes, hurricanes, where cell phones cease to work. The Amphan was one of the prime examples where cell phones and other means of communications were seized. Amateur radio enthusiasts and licensed operators were working with different relief groups and organizations. Ham radio has also reached as far as out of space. Ham radio operators can talk to astronauts about the International Space Station. Amateur radio operators can also talk via the amateur radio satellites that are orbiting the Earth and even bounce the radio signal off the moon and back. Now why do we call it ham radio? The word ham came in 1908 from the first wireless station opened by some amateurs at Harvard University. They were Albert Hyman, Bob Almy and Augie Murray. At first they called it with their last names but then they shortened it to the first initial of their last name and it became have ever since. So now I'm going to do a demonstration on how we actually communicate on the ham radio bands. Right now I'm going to trigger the repeater on which somebody will be waiting for a call. This is 3 Hotel Juliet Tango. This is Hotel Juliet Tango. I was, uh, you know, recording a video on, uh, you know, working on uh, amateur radio bands and uh, uh, promoting the ham radio uh, hobby. So, if you have any word uh, for the students who are actually watching the video right now, uh, it would be great.
view to Foxtrot India. This is VA3 HJT. Uh, thank you, uh, Foxtrot India. Uh, it is actually a great inspiration and motivation for the new ham uh, enthusiasts. Uh, so, anyways, your signal is fine and blasting. Thank you very much uh, for the QSO and the information. This is VA3 HJT. Over. So that was about uh, how we communicate on the ham radio bands. Hope you liked the video. These are some of my friends in amateur radio. Of course, the first picture is mine operating from my institute QTH. Second is Miloslav and third is Marija. She is Yankee 3 Alpha Whiskey Alpha from Serbia and also Milo YT2CQ Yankee Tango 2 Charlie Quebec is from Serbia. As you can see, these are some of the activities that are performed in the amateur radio field. ARDF or Amateur Radio Direction Finding which is also known as Fox Hunting. QRP is another method where you try to transmit with very low power from 1 watt to 5 watts. CW or Morse code is, an, is the prime method of uh, communicating on the ham radio bands. SOTA or the summits on the air that is activating your very mobile QTHs say for example on a mountain or a hill amateur radio satellites you can work amateur radio satellites as discussed before and communicate to many other ham radio operators throughout the world ARISS or amateur radio on the International Space Station like also mentioned before you can communicate to the astronauts about the International Space Station and radio astronomy, radio astronomy field days the expeditions and emergencies Hamfests, SSTV, and weather satellite monitoring. These are the examples of amateur radio satellites in space. Their payload is basically a UHF and VHF transponder. Amateur radio operators use these transponders to communicate across the world. Here is a picture of me working on the International Space Station while receiving SSTV images. These are some of the satellite tracking softwares that are available freely on the internet. For example, Orbitron and GPredict. You can just select the satellite you're looking for and the plot will be shown. Hey, I'm Sainath, holding the call sign Victor Uniform 3 Hotel Juliet Tango. I am in charge of the ground station systems at TSE Technologies. I'm here to talk about satellite communications and the ground station systems involved and also give you a brief introduction to the ICAS command. We live our lives knowing that many satellites orbit our planet every day. They are helping us in several ways. You might be surprised to know that there are more than 5000 satellites orbiting the earth. The most obvious question that come to mind are why are these satellites in totally different orbits? How does a satellite carry out all of its functions? And how does the communication take place between the Earth and the satellite, which help them to accomplish all their allotted tasks? Let's explore the answers to all these questions in detail. A satellite is an artificial body placed in an orbit around the Earth or another planet. The communication satellites relay around the world telephone communications, fax messages, television programs, radio signals, and so on. Principles of Satellite Communication The process of communication begins at an earth station. The earth station is an installation designed to transmit and receive signals from a satellite in orbit around the earth. Earth stations send information in the form of high-powered, high-frequency signals to the satellites that receive and retransmit the signals to the Earth. These retransmitted signals are then received by other Earth stations in the coverage area of the satellite. The area which receives the signal from the satellite is known as the satellite's footprint. The transmission system from the Earth station to the satellite is called the uplink and the transmission system from the satellite to the Earth station is called the downlink. Here 
you have the schematic representation of the principle of satellite communication. To avoid confusion, the uplink and downlink frequencies are kept different in a satellite. For designing a satellite communication system, we must choose the orbit in which the satellite is to be placed. Orbits are of three types mainly, geostationary orbit or geosynchronous orbit, polar orbit or inclined highly elliptical orbit, geostationary or geosynchronous orbit. In this type of orbit, the satellite takes 24 hours to circle once around the Earth. The revolution period of the satellite is synchronized with the rotation of the Earth. The satellite appears to be stationary in the sky for this reason. 35,900 km high equatorial orbit is called the geostationary orbit. The geostationary orbit is also known as the Clark's orbit. This is in honor of Arthur C. Clarke, the man who first suggested in 1945 that satellites in geosynchronous orbit could be used for communication purposes. Entire Earth can be linked by the satellite network if three geostationary satellites are placed at the vertices of an equilateral triangle because each of the satellite covers one third of the globe. Polar circular orbit. This type of orbit is placed thousand kilometers above the Earth's surface. It passes over the poles. Every time the satellite orbits the Earth, it passes over the poles. The angle of inclination of this orbit is 90 degrees. It scans the whole Earth in every 12 hours. Satellites used for weather monitoring are launched into a polar orbit. Highly inclined elliptical orbits. It is used for establishing communication with regions at high latitudes. Angle of inclination is equal to 63 degrees. Now let's talk about the ICAS command. The ICAS command is a network of ground stations. This project promotes and supports free and open source applications. It seeks to address the problem of connecting many satellite observers or users to many ground station operators. Modern open source software, web and hardware techniques are used in implementing the network, database, client and ground station subsystems. Modularity in all the systems promotes the dual use of ground stations by not interfering with local operation while utilizing the great amount of time a civilian non-commercial ground station would otherwise sit idle. The ICAS command is similar to the SATNOX project. It is going to be a complete platform of network ground stations. The scope of the project is to create a full stack of open source technologies based on open standards and the construction of a full ground station as the showcase of the stack. The ICAS command also provides the basis for a modular design for integration with existing and future technologies and also a platform for a variety of instrumentation around satellite ground station operations. It also provides a firm platform for a ground station collaborative network which may be one to one, one to many or many to many. A community-based approach is the most important approach for the ground station development. It is also a solution for massive automation of operator-less ground stations based on open standards. There are a number of elements to the project that integrate hardware and software in a way that allows multiple observers to be connected to multiple ground stations so that tracking and monitoring satellites from multiple locations is possible. The data that is collected is publicly available through the production environment. Let us now look into the ICAS ground stations common architecture. The reason why ICAS ground stations are so similar in architecture is they are designed for the communication links typically used in small satellites. The architecture of the ground station in India has limited mass and power budget and restricted pointing capabilities. Primarily, UHF and VHF transceivers are used for communication. The utilized frequency bands are the 70 cm and the 2 meter bands, which are basically your UHF and VHF bands. 
They are part of the amateur radio bands and are under the supervision of the International Amateur Radio Union. Higher frequency bands, example S band, will be the next step in evolution process of small satellites, but are still rarely used. Since the architecture of the ICAS ground stations has hardware components for VHF and UHF that are commercially available. Our ground stations are built up from low-cost commercial off-the-shelf components, typically a standard radio transceiver or a receiver, which is a software-defined radio, and a terminal node controller TNC, which are used by connecting them to a simple desktop computer that are normally connected to the internet for data exchange. A variety of antennas and suitable tracking systems are offered. Example, Orbitron and G-Predict, like we looked up previously in the presentation. To control the antenna and radio equipment, several software solutions are available. Open source as well as proprietary. The ground stations of an ICAS network will be connected through the internet on the transport layer. Transmission Control Protocol or TCP or User Datagram Protocol UDP is used depending on the application each ground station in the network can be seen as an access node to a satellite which is in contact range. Typically only one communication link to a satellite can be established at the same time but it is also possible to track one satellite with several ground stations in parallel to achieve a more robust connection or to increase redundancy. Currently Internet protocol is the only used data exchange between the ground station computers. There is no real end-to-end -end communication between satellites and distant ground stations on the basis of internet protocol. Internet protocol in space is an approach pursued from several researches. The primarily used protocol for data exchange between ground station and satellites is AX25 which confirms to the HDLC ISO standard 3309. AX25 originates from the X25 protocol that was adopted for the special needs of the radio amateur community. It is used as a data link layer protocol in packet radio mode. Error detection is possible due to a 2 byte checksum attached to the each frame Corrupted packets are discarded by default from a TNC device. In many ground stations, the TNC is replaced by a software modem, emulated by a standard sound card. This enables more control over the radio link and delivers new opportunities for post-processing of corrupted data. AX25 is accepted in the small satellite community as a standard communication protocol. Major ground station network projects. Nevertheless, a migration to other protocols might be on a long term view, reasonable for compatibility reasons. That was about the ICAS command. This is an example setup of the ICAS ground stations setup in India. It mainly consists of a Raspberry Pi as a TNC, a RTL SDR dongle which is a software defined radio. Also an LNA, a low noise amplifier to amplify the signals. This is a wideband LNA which can amplify signals from 2 MHz up to 3 GHz. Moving on, we have FM bandstop filter which rejects all FM radio signals that are broadcasted. The rightmost picture is the setup of a turnstile antenna which was designed for VHF frequencies. With this kind of antenna, we can receive all weather satellites and any satellite that is in the VHF frequencies. It is a right hand circularly polarized antenna which can receive satellites at a very low elevation starting at 15 degrees. Hence, this is the setup of the ICAS ground station. We also take orders for bulk manufacturing and deployment of affordable satellite ground station systems and to enable ICA's ground station network around the world. 
As you can see, this is the version 1 of the ICAS V-Dipole antenna that we provide as a kit. It's basically a V-Dipole, but with an added reflector. An added reflector adds more gain to the antenna. More information will be provided on the website. These are some of the images downlinked from Meteor M2 satellites via the ICAS ground station. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my video.